Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout here with my co-host Jonathan Frank. And Jonathan, we have got quite the power duo on the show today. We really do. They could have each been their own episode. Uh, we're talking to Cookville Vice Mayor and Tennessee Tech alumnus Luke Eldridge. And up first, we're going to hear from Tennessee Tech Sports Hall of Famer and the trailblazing athlete, coach, and administrator herself, Dr. Diane Murphy. Now, Luke has been such a valuable partner to all of us at the Visitors Bureau. He is someone who understands the importance of tourism to a strong local economy. And it also doesn't hurt that he's an all around nice guy. He's gonna tell us about how he got into public service, his years at Tennessee Tech, and why he has chosen to stay planted right here in Cookville. Who could blame him? Yeah, this'll be uh, my first conversation with him. So I'm looking forward to it. But someone I have gotten to know better over the past few months is our first guest, uh, Dr. Diane Murphy. Shan, if there was a competition for most engaged Tennessee Tech alumna, she'd have to be at the top of the list. She does it all. She chairs the foundation board. She is an adjunct instructor. She was a commencement speaker. She won the Distinguished Alumni Award. She's in the Sports Hall of Fame and she's helping to lead the campaign to rebuild our football stadium. I don't know how she finds time to do it all, but maybe she'll tell us her secret. <laughs> yes, and Dr. Murphy all, also did our chamber team building recently, so we can add that to her resume. <laughs> she and Luke are definitely pillars of this community, and we're so excited to share these conversations with you. Up first, it's our interview with Dr. Diane Murphy. Welcome back, everybody. Our next guest has to be one of Tennessee Tech's most decorated alumni. Dr. M. Diane Murphy holds two degrees from Tennessee Tech and went on to serve as athletics director for both the University of Denver and Columbia University. As a student, she played on Tech's inaugural women's basketball, tennis, and volleyball teams. And in her years since graduation, she received the university's Distinguished Alumni Award, Tech's highest alumni honor, in 2005, and was inducted into the Tennessee Tech Sports Hall of Fame just last November. Dr. Murphy is also the recipient of the Jostens Berenson Lifetime Achievement Award from the Women's Basketball Coaches Association and was a speaker at the university's fall commencement ceremony last December. Recently, Dr. Murphy moved back right here to Tennessee's college town and her hometown after 47 years away. She now serves as chair of the university's foundation board, is an adjunct instructor at the university, and has volunteered her time to help lead fundraising and engagement efforts for plans to rebuild the university's football stadium. Dr. Murphy also serves as vice president for the Pictor Group, an intercollegiate athletics consulting firm. Dr. Murphy, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased to join you all today. Dr. Murphy, when you were inducted into the Tennessee Tech Sports Hall of Fame, they described you as a pioneer who, and I'm quoting here, blazed a trail for women in collegiate athletics as a student athlete, a coach, and an administrator. And uh, I, you know, I was thinking, I've, I've heard it said that trailblazers don't always realize they're being trailblazers at the time. Um, so when you were competing on some of Tennessee Tech's first ever women's sports teams, or when you became, for example, the first female at, uh, athletic director at Columbia University, did you realize the historical significance of what you were doing at the time? Or was it something you didn't really think about until later? Well, Jonathan, I really didn't think about it, to be totally honest. And, and when I was here as a student athlete at Tennessee Tech, 1969 through 1972, I really have to say that I really there were other women that were really trailblazers that gave us the opportunity to compete. Uh, people like Dr. Christine Grant, who was at the University of Iowa, Dr. Martha Mullins, who was at Eastern Kentucky University, our own Mary Nell Metters, who started our intercollegiate athletics program at Tennessee Tech, uh, Gloria Ray, who was at the University of Tennessee, Betty Wiseman, who was at Belmont University. So we, I really, and my teammates were recipients of those women and others like them, who I would say were really the trailblazers. I was the beneficiary of those women who cared enough about giving us young girls and women an opportunity to compete in college sports. And I would say the same thing about going into coaching. 
And I would say the same thing about becoming a division one athletics director. There were people ahead of me that really paved the way. Now I would say some people today who are in those positions would say that I was one of those trailblazers, but I can honestly tell you that I was a beneficiary. I love the fact that you are acknowledging all of these amazing women that came before you, (laughs) just as we're considering you are that amazing woman. Uh, Your wonderful career is uh, full of countless accolades and awards, but I can only imagine that your induction into the Tennessee Tech Sports Hall of Fame last fall must have been particularly meaningful for you because this is your home. I know it would be for me. Uh, Take us back to the moment you found out you'd been selected. How did you find out? And tell us about the Hall of Fame dinner itself, which most of us will never have an opportunity to attend. That had to be a surreal and very proud moment for you. Well, it was surreal. Uh, I got a call from Mark Wilson, our, our beloved athletics director, and he, we were just talking a little bit about things. And then he, then he went into this formal mode, and I'm like, well, what's the deal, you know? And so he told me, and I have to be honest with you, I couldn't believe it. I honestly couldn't believe it, and I cried because – you know, and I realize now, after the fact that, you know, there, there, there were so many better athletes than me, but I realized now I was not going in for my athletic ability. Let me tell you that. I was going in for other things. And, and to me, it meant so much to me that I was recognized by my alma mater. I would have never thought in a million years that I would be selected and inducted into Tennessee Tech Sports Hall of Fame because... I was, I was on the team. I was a role player. I, was, I didn't score a lot of points, didn't have a lot of rebounds, didn't have a lot of assists. Uh, I was busy doing other things with my coach, Mary Nell Metters, you know, trying to get w- women's equity on campus, you know, working with President Derry Berry, working with the student senate. So those were my efforts, not really being a great athlete. But now that I look back on it, I realize that my induction had a lot to do with other things as well as being on the basketball and volleyball and tennis teams. I I think that response uh, speaks to your humility, Dr. Murphy, because to all of us, we would think uh, that's just such an obvious choice. But here you are telling us that you were surprised to find that out. Now, this is a podcast about really about life in Cookville and the people like you who make this such a wonderful place. So tell us about your history with, with this community. I remember you uh, last fall at that business before hours at on the football field, you shared a little bit about your history with Cookville. You know, this is your hometown, but you also spent many years away before returning a little over three years ago. Uh, what made you decide to come back to Cookville and, and what has that transition been like for you? Well, I did grow up here. My father owned a shoe store. My mother worked at City Hall. And uh, when people came in to pay their light bill, she took their money. Uh, and so I grew up here, I uh, went to kindergarten here, I went to Capshaw, I went to Putnam County Senior High School at the time, and then, of course, Tennessee Tech. And so, you know, growing up here was amazing. We, you know, we had great athletes here in Cookville, Watson Brown, Otis Phillips, Ralph Mullins, uh, Mac Brown, you know, we, we just had really good teams. And so I had wonderful teachers, wonderful coaches. Um, it was a great place to grow up. And then, of course, I left for 47 years and I had a great career in college athletics, lived a lot of places. And then when I retired, I needed community. And so I I had a home in Wilmington, North Carolina. I went there for a few years, but I realized that I was missing community. And I have a lot of friends here. You know, I have a lot of people I went to elementary school with, high school with, and we're still very, very close friends. And so when I started really thinking about what did I need, I needed community. I needed to be around people that knew me. And and I also felt like that I could get engaged at Tennessee Tech and and bring my skills and my passion for the university and help the university in a variety of ways. And so it was really a no-brainer once I really started thinking about it. And so I came back and have no regrets whatsoever. Well, you have obviously put your time here to good use and made such a difference. You've contributed to your alma mater in so many ways. Uh, Your foundation board chair, a commencement speaker, an adjunct instructor, and the list goes on and on. 
but lesser known to some people is all of your behind the scenes work supporting Tech's rebuilt football stadium and the new football operations center. Why was that so important to you? Because football is really important to a university and having winning football team is really important. It helps the university in a variety of ways. Um, and so um, my good friend, my late friend, uh, Otis Phillips, who passed away almost a year ago, um, when I came back, he and Otis and I got together and we decided that we really needed to help our beloved alma mater. And, we, and the way that we knew we could help them is to really get engaged and help with football stadium uh, and to help with the football operations center. So Otis and I together went to Mark Wilson. We went to President Olam and we said, hey, we'd like to help. Can we get involved in this? Is it okay if we lead the charge on this? And of course, both Mark and Phil agreed and said, yes, please, please go ahead. So Otis and I started on this. We were partners. Um, I miss him desperately because he was a great partner great friend. We grew up together, went to church together, went to Sunday school together. He's like my brother. So um, we were doing this because we love the university. Uh, we love football. We love winning. And so we decided this was something that he and I had the skill set to do and the passion to do. And so, um, of course, I miss him every day. But now I have other partners and uh, that are working extraordinarily hard on this. And, uh, and so it's not all about me, but it's a variety of people that have really come together to do this. And Phil has been great, been very supportive. Uh, Mark Wilson has been very supportive. Uh, our former football coach was very supportive. And now of course, our new football coach has been very supportive. So it's just a labor of love and something that needs to be done for the university. Dr. Murphy, we like to end each interview with the same question. And that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? It changed my life. It's as simple as that, Jonathan. You know, when I was a child growing up, I was very shy. It was kind of awkward. If it had not been for sports, if it had not been for books, if it had not been for a variety of my teachers and coaches, I'm not sure what I would have done. I was an average student. If you can believe that, I was an average student. I made C's. And it really wasn't until I got to the university that I really became motivated and realized with a lot of support that I could do, I could do some things and I could make a difference. And so that has been something that has been uh, my life's work is I want to leave, leave a legacy of having been engaged, being a, being a person that gives, being a person that shares, and being a person that lives her life to the fullest. And so Tennessee Tech gave me that because I was, I was not a good student. I had to go on probation to summer school, you know, and I ended up doing okay. And I, and I really owe that to all my teachers and faculty in Tennessee Tech for believing in me. And, um, and even President Derryberry, you know, I used to give him a hard time because I was always fighting for equity at Tennessee Tech for women. I remember walking across that stage in Memorial Gym and he was saying to me when he handed my diploma, I am so glad you're out of here because I was always aggravating him about more money for women's sports program. And he said that in a teasing way. But I love the university and uh, it's, it's good to be home. Well, when you talk about uh, leaving a legacy, you have certainly done that on, on this campus and beyond. Uh, Dr. Murphy, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you. Our next guest is the vice mayor of Tennessee's College Town himself, the wonderful, the amazing Luke Eldridge. Now, Luke, as vice mayor, uh, you are a Cookville nat native who uh, were elected to your role in the Cookville City Council in 2022, I believe. You are a proud Tennessee Tech alumnus from the class of 2010, holding a degree in psychology. And just last year, you were named to the inaugural class of Movers and Shakers by Cookville Lifestyle Magazine. Luke, welcome to College Town Talk. Hey, appreciate it. Excited to be on. Okay, now we're going to start our conversation by talking about your service as vice mayor. Now, for those of our listeners who don't know, the mayor and vice mayor of Cookville are also members of the city council. So you ran for city council for the first time in 2022, and I know it probably feels like forever. These are like dog years. <laughs> and yeah. we're the second highest vote getter. I don't know if that's the appropriate term among the entire slate of candidates. So that's a big deal that propelled you into the role of vice mayor. 
Now, why did you decide to run for this position? And when you look back over the last year and a half, what are you most proud of? You know, what I've worked with a lot of the prior um, city council members and just what I've been doing for the last decade of work, uh, working with homeless, substance abuse, mental health, um, just really working with the churches, working with the community on a lot of things. And I had actually thought about running about two cycles ago and it just didn't seem well. It didn't seem to fit at that time. Um, and I, I got some guidance from some people and, you know, I was, I think I, I was 29, 30 at that time. So it was, I was still young and needed to get some more, needed to get some more road paved ahead and working with individuals. So this time it just seemed fit. You know, there were, a, there were quite a few rolling off and I thought I'd, I actually talked with, you know, at the time Mayor Shelton talked with him and I was in a meet and he thought it'd be a great idea, but talking with, uh, Mayor Wheaton now, I talked with her a couple of years, about a year before I ran and say, she goes, have you ever thought about running? I said, actually, I'm going to put my name in the hat to score around. So she was like, oh, please do. She seemed excited about it. So me and my wife prayed about it. We talked about it. That just, it just seemed like it was time. I got tired of not getting anything accomplished from some of the things I've been working on because I always felt like I had to scream up. So I thought, well, let's just go sit at the table and see how we can make some changes and help. Uh, where we can, how we can, and if we can. And so that that's what really led me, but I also felt like God was wanting me to be in that spot. And I know sometimes that sounds cliche or people say that, but I really felt that's what needed to happen. And things just lined up for me. And um, that was it. So what I'm most proud of, honestly, uh, one of the biggest things, and I think Mayor Wheaton even mentioned this too, I think one of the most things all of us would say we're proud of is getting pay raises for everybody i still would love to do more um and i think that that's one of the things i would that we're kind of looking at focusing on over the next little bit but i'd love to do that uh even more but i think that's one of the biggest things proud of that we've done is be able to at least get us up a little bit closer to where everybody should be we got a few more miles to go with that and uh, i think we can do it so uh luke for our listeners who don't know uh, the city council does have term limits and if i have this right uh, I believe your first term expires in 2026, and then you could conceivably serve four more years. So uh, we're, we're going to put on our, our CNN anchor hat here, ask a serious question. Do you plan to run again in 2026? And would you ever be a candidate for higher office beyond the city council? I do plan on running again. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying uh, working with the city and seeing just we've got a great city all of our department heads james mills all of them are fantastic at what they do uh they they really are what run the city right we we're just there to make sure things are going and being that spokesperson where we need to be for the city and what we think is right but also listening to constituents but yeah i'm going to run again i've actually had some individuals reach out to me to say have you ever thought about going higher somewhere else and i was like i'm a local guy so if it's anything I would do, it would be local, getting into the state, getting into the Senate, getting into Congress. That's that's not my thing. I think you, who we have there is fantastic, I think. Um, but sometimes I think you lose sight of some things locally uh, when you get that far up. But you're at a different, you know, it's an, you're at a different level and you have to focus on different things. And I'm, I'm more local. I love working with our local individuals. So if I did, it would, it's going to be local for sure. Well, you're leading definitely into my next question, Luke. And as it's already been said, you are a Cookville native. You obviously have a passion for this city and local government. It's not only where you're from, it's where you attended college. Uh, it's where you've chosen to plant your family and it's where you're serving in an elected office. So I guess my question is, why Cookville? I mean, obviously, as the yeah. director of tourism, I'm all about Cookville. And I think it's amazing. But what would you want a visitor or maybe even a prospective tech student or the parent of a tech student to know about this community? You know, I, I've, I've thought about that multiple times. It's And to me, there's two parts to this. Number one, it's almost like cheers. Everybody kind of knows everybody. Uh, it really is. Even though we're growing, I can't go anywhere. And even before on city council, you don't go anywhere where you don't see somebody you know. And it, I mean, at any time of the day, even if you visit something new, um, you, you just don't 
I don't know. I just, I see people I know. Um, everybody's very friendly. Um, even when we disagree on things, we still actually are able to talk about it, which I think is really cool. And I don't think that happens much in some other areas. But the other thing too is Cookville's prime location because 4111 were our here from big city. If that's what you enjoy, you don't have to live there. You can go there. And I think, I think what Davidson County or Williamson County, one of those just became not affordable to live there. anymore. They have just reached that mark and it's a, affordable in a sense for Cookville, even though we got some things going on, but I don't know, just the atmosphere thing, uh, the people is what makes Cookville so great. I really believe that regardless of what we see, regardless of what we think of our politics, we still are able to talk. We're not so far pulled apart as society, as nationally as what you're seeing. And we're able to talk about things. And I really value that. Appreciate that with everybody in Cougar. You know, I, I do think that the, the, the city leaders and the county leaders have always modeled how to disagree without being disagreeable in cases where yeah. they do disagree, um, how to find unity. We've talked about that with Mayor Porter on the show and with uh, with Mayor Wheaton. And it, it, it does seem to really be a distinctive of, of Cookville and, and our community. Yeah, I believe that. And just add a little bit, because most of us in and you don't have the sum because that's just how it is. But a lot of us, you know, we don't we don't see the we don't see red and blue. We we see our community and we're not so fixated on red or blue. We are fixated on what's best for our community. And, and so it takes everybody to be able to do that. And, you know, Mayor Porter's great at it. Mayor Wheaton's great at it. Uh, previous council's great at it. Just anybody in leadership. We, we're, we're OK with coming to the table and talking about it, even though it's uncomfortable. And I think that's what's valuable. Uh, in Cookville because we're not going to agree on everything, but we're not going to go out there and blast everybody on social media. And we're, but we're going to come to the table and say, hey, let's talk about this because we can agree to disagree and we got to find how we work together. Um, and there's just some things you're just never going to agree on. And that's totally fine. Like my favorite color is blue. Some people may not agree on that. That's okay. I'm not going to make you I'm not going to say you have to think that, you know. Another thing that a lot of people might not know is that uh, I believe most, if not all, of our city council members are also working full-time jobs while they continue to serve the city. And uh, in your case, your career has been focused on supporting workforce development, helping job seekers, uh, and that's in your role at a, an organization called Career Team which I understand is, is really dedicated to closing the opportunity divide, uh, reducing unemployment and eradicating poverty. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so Career Team is a national, well, it's, a, it's across the nation here. Uh, they've got multiple areas. They've exploded over the last few years to try to get in, work with what's the WIOA grants, um, TANF grants, uh, SNAP. There's a lot of things they do here in the Upper Cumberland. The biggest thing we focus on is the WIOA grant, and that's the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. So we in, we help individuals who are you know, low income, uh, individuals who may not be able to afford to go to a TCAT, a VOC school, something like that, or just trying to get them right back into the workforce and trying to help fill those gaps. Um, so I have a office in eight counties. I cover the whole Upper Cumberland, and I have a staff member in each one of them. A great staff, hardworking staff. Um, I, I'm very proud to say my I've got three staff members that are, you know, they've either had a felony record or they're ex. They had an ex felony record, so I've you know almost thirty percent of my staff is coming back into the reentry and they're they're some of my best workers they're one's my ops manager fantastic and then i've got one that helps with students another one that does reentry. so we 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 do everything we can to work with students in the school to help them navigate where they what they think they want to do but do we have a, a a platform called career edge where they can go in and it really shows them what they're really interested in my goal is once we can get enough of the high schools to do that is to take it for economic development and say Hey, Putnam County, these are what the school, the kids want to try to keep some here. Clay County, let's keep them here. This is what your kids want and try to help grow economic development. And that's, that's a big piece to what I see long-term, what we've got to try to do. But career team's been amazing to work with and even internally just trying to bridge the gaps with everything we can to get the workforce back up and going in each county. We appreciate that important work. That's invaluable, especially in today's time with what we're facing and the challenges that we're going through. Now, 
Luke, finally, it's time for the end of this interview. And we like to end each interview with the same question. And I know it's very hard to pick just one thing, but what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? So funny, I, 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 thinking about this, one thing that happened was when, when I was picking to go to college, I had three colleges in mind. I'm a Florida Gator fan. I know that upsets a lot of UT fans, but that's okay. If you'll just have to live with it. Um, but I'm a Florida. We can agree to disagree. I'll go to a UT game. I uh, love the atmosphere there. It's fun. So I, I, I applied for Florida. I wanted to go to Boston College because it was sports related. Um, they were number 11 or no, they hit the top 10 at that time when I was looking at colleges in basketball. So I wanted to go there and then Tennessee Tech. But my whole plan the whole time was to Unfortunately, I was going to move. I was going to move out. I love the Upper Cumberland now, but at that time, you're young, dumb. You just think, get out of here, you know. But I was going to move. Uh, and uh, ironically, what the best thing tech ever did was that's where I met my wife. Uh, I love my degree, psychology degree. One of the hard, I'll tell you, tech is one of the hardest psychology um, majors to do. You have to do a senior thesis uh, your senior year, and it's a lot of work if you don't. If, if you don't hit, if you don't do one, if you don't pass one class your junior year, you it puts you back a lot. And but it taught me a lot and helped me to do what I'm doing today. I'm not using psychology, but I am using it because I work with people. <laughs> I'm sure you so, are. But it was my wife. I met her there, and she's a local girl from White County. Uh, she was education major, and we crossed paths because I started out as a special education major, and um, just realized that's not what I needed. Psychology just really fit me very well. Um, but met her, decided All right, I'm going to grow my, my family's here. And that really pulled me back into focusing on, and this is where I think God wanted me to be ultimately. Uh, sometimes we run from the things God wants. And uh, I think I didn't get swallowed by a whale, so that's nice. Uh, didn't have to go through a Jonah <laughs> could experience. Been worse, could, could have been, been worse, Luke. It could have been much worse. <laughs> could have went through a Jonah experience, but I didn't have to. I was able to stay here. And that's one of the biggest things tech did for me was help me get my focus back to where I should be in that staying year. Well, I love to hear that answer. And you're not the first one who has given that particular answer of thanking tech for their spouse. Yeah. So that that is that is a, a wonderful uh, outcome uh, to go along with your, your great education. Luke, thanks so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Hey, I really appreciate it. And as always, wings up. <laughs> <laughs> For our listeners, learn more about your Cookville City Council at cookville-tn.gov. We want to thank Dr. Diane Murphy and Vice Mayor Luke Eldridge for being our guests today on College Town Talk. And thanks to all of you for making College Town Talk part of your week. When you listen to our program and share it with your friends, you're not just supporting a podcast. You're helping tell the story of Cookville and Tennessee Tech University. Join us again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.